right, guys, we're back again with another great episode of PFREI. I'm your host, Juan Bilal. Today we have a special guest, William Holly. Uh, William is from New Jersey, another Jersey guy in the house. Yes, New Jersey <laughs> in the building. <laughs> all, right, all right, so basically, you know, I just bring uh, seasoned real estate investors on the show to kind of talk about their experience. Um, we're right now in, in the midst of COVID-19. We're like, uh, you know, six weeks into this. Uh, it's, it's, it's insanity really for a lot of different people. Uh, this is another, uh, market cycle. It's a black swan event, as they say, you know, it's, it's unpredictable of how it's going to play. Like I've been through, uh, you know, 9-11, I've been through 2008 and this is a little bit different because you really don't know which direction it's going to go. Like most people are trying to, uh, make big similarities between this event and 2008. So I'll get your take on that. But before we get started on the show, just uh, give people background, um, you know, how you guys started in real estate and what you're currently doing today. Sure. Uh, thank well, First, thanks for having me on the podcast. It's an honor. Um, we uh, started in 2006. I, I come from banking myself. I was a banker with Commerce Bank. And uh, I left banking to get into real estate, uh, bought a first apartment complex. Uh, I moved in one of the buildings in the complex and leveraged that that uh, property to, uh, I had a mortgage company, we sold that construction company I still have, and uh, we had a property management company. We had 23 to 400 units and we sold it to uh, Jersey Management out of Brooklyn. But my main business has always been buying and selling. Um, so we started out in 2006, did you know, three or four properties, uh, all the way up to 2000, I think 12, which are our best year where we did 150 properties. Um, me and my partner broke up in 2016 and uh, we scaled it back down. So we got real big, figured out we had a bunch of expenses and uh, the best idea was for us to shrink it down. But our main services that we provide are wholesale properties um, and also consulting for our investors who wanna use our consulting platform um, or who want to use our back office of contractors and realtors and things like that. Uh, we, we let them use, use that, that resource. Awesome, so your, your main business is, is wholesaling? Do you do any buy and holds or just predominantly wholesaling? Uh, 50, 50. So we, we'll, we'll typically do between 80 to 90 properties a year. Half of them will wholesale and the other half will renovate them and flip them or keep them in our buy and hold portfolio. That's awesome. And then one of the questions I always ask the guests at the top of the show is why are you passionate for real estate investing? Why are you not working a corporate job or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like now with all these layoffs, uh, no. <laughs> Um, I, the, the, the politics and corporate, um, you seem to be polished, polished, like you're from corporate yourself. Um, but I, I didn't like it. I like the freedom of entrepreneurship. Um, I, I love real estate. Believe it or not, I, I like fashion, man. And the closest thing to fashion to dressing yourself was dressing a property. Um, I, I like the colors. I, I like the building. I like architecture and I also like numbers. So the perfect blend for me was real estate. Um, and, and, and then I, I think when I bought that first apartment building, when I was working two jobs, I was at the bank and somewhere else. And I lived in one unit and I think I bought about six or seven more rental properties. Uh, within that year and a half, cash flow, wise, with cash flow wise, when I was able to leave my full-time job and I saw the economics of real estate, I think anybody would fall in love from, you know, from then on. Yeah, that's, that's awesome, man. I see you... Uh... See, is that CNN on in the background there? It is. My little brother, <laughs> pressured, he pressured me into buying some stocks. So now I'm, I'm hooked and it's taking up more time than really what I'm making because I don't really go, I got a whole lot in the market. Oh, you, you diversify? You playing, you playing with that stock market, huh? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like catching fallen knives right now in, in this space. I mean, it's, it's unknown. Let's talk about currently what we're experiencing, how is it affecting your business? That's one of the other questions I always ask is what challenges are you facing? And now I guess is, is you know, time to address the elephant in the room. How has uh, the COVID-19 affect, you know, your marketing, your lead generation, selling the properties? Um, and what are you doing to position yourself, um, you know, to come out of this ahead? So when we were doing a lot of turnkey deals, I told you about 150 transactions. We were selling properties to people in Hawaii, Alaska, everywhere. And we were doing it all remotely, right? And it shocked the heck out of me that people would buy a property without physically coming to see it. Uh, I see real estate going not totally there, but as much as there as possible to, to automation. 
Um, now with people staying home and, and people uh, to sell a property, you got to bulk up the information that you're giving someone, appraisals, um, you know, video tours, things like that. Ultimately, I think that's where it's, it's going to go. So I, I have the, the luxury of having that experience because I think that's where real estate is going. The crazy thing about it is um, a lot of my investors do call at least like 30, 25, 30 percent of them. And they're, they're afraid because they don't know how to underwrite deals anymore um, because they feel like the world's coming down. And uh, these are, what's, what's crazy to me, because these are, these are buy and hold investors. And if you look at it, really, if, if you got rents that are coming in at a certain level and you got fixed long term debt, um, there's really nothing to be afraid of. Uh, if, if your cash flow is what you want it to be, if the value on the property goes down 15, 20 percent and your cash flow is still the same and it's not your objective to be a short seller and just be selling, you know, back and forth and it doesn't affect you that much. Now, for the flippers, I, I think that it is a tough time for them. Some guys have created a business model out of buying and selling. But I think you just got to change up your buying criteria. If you were buying at a 70, you know, 5% LTV, you need to lower that to a 70 to a 65. So you need to buy a little bit lower and sell a little bit cheaper, um, but you still have a model. Uh, so what I'm telling all my guys who run like small real estate businesses that basically want to put their business on, on pause is uh, what's the cost of doing that? You know, so some people have built up small operations. You got an assistant, you might have some VAs, you might got some contractors that's dependent on it. You own a business, you know, you don't feed a contractor for after the next job. They, they going on to, they going on to somebody else. So yeah. <laughs> there's a cost to stopping your business. Right. So from this fear, if you, you I think everybody has to realize if it hasn't really impacted you, like my buying whole guys, like I'm telling you, it's just a fear of it. You've got to keep pushing. You got to adjust your criteria, I think, and uh, and be aggressive. Um, so it hasn't. To, long story short, we were in the middle of like six or seven flips. And, uh, you know, Governor, um, our governor, uh, he, he uh, said no more construction was going on. So, of course, I went immediately to the website and was like, uh, what do you consider essential construction? And of course, a single family house where five or less people was there, uh, you can still do construction. So I'm finding myself slipping through the cracks, slipping through the cracks, slipping through the cracks. But what it's creating is a more valuable product in the end because all the guys on the big condo sites, they can't work anymore. Uh, you know, so, and I'm also seeing, I, I tested the MLS out last week. Last week, I didn't do anything. I didn't buy anything. All I did was look at auction.com, uh, called all the wholesalers, seen what they were selling, called all the realtors. Stuff is still flying off the market within two to three days. It's, you know, cash and retail. So there was so much pent up demand. Um, like we know, all that demand hasn't fizzled out yet. What could, yeah. potentially, <laughs> what could potentially happen is that demand, it may be good for that, for some of these guys to get some buying opportunities and who knows if, if we will be out of this. So I just say you got to be really fundamental and, and has an impact on your business. And it really hasn't that much. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's weird. I mean, even with the MLS here in Northern Jersey, um, I'm seeing a little bit different. I have, I'm a licensed realtor as well. I have my alerts set to feed me data every morning uh, from mm -hmm. different counties that I invest in. And I'm seeing deals that I believe wholesalers have locked in the contract Mm -hmm. that was not able to push, they're coming back to the market. Yeah. I'm seeing pricing being reduced on stuff that was listed that went on the contract and fell out. Now it's coming back on the market uh, 10 to 15% less. So now it's an influx of inventory that's starting to build up. And that haven't even trickled down to the mom and pop shed who didn't get rent collection, who's looking for liquidity. So mm -hmm. um, I don't have a crystal ball, but I believe that um, you know, there will be some opportunity down the line, probably Q3, Q4, when the floodgates are going to bust open. Mm -hmm. um, and that will be, so as you mentioned, to, to touch on what you're saying, to keep going, of course. Um, I myself, same thing like you, I sort of, the, the, uh, my, some of my contractors sent me these text messages with, they shutting down. And I kind of looked at it, well, we fall in the affordable home category, so that don't apply to us. Like, <laughs> right. Affordable home, we got to keep this thing going. You know, we're going to stop to the drawer stock coming from the banks. Exactly. So, you know, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we still got money. We got to keep going. So gotta keep going, we're man. still doing the same thing, slipping through the cracks and making it happen, staying in contact with the building officials to make sure that we can move how we're moving out here so nobody get fined and everything else. Mm -hmm. but like you said, what is the cost of stopping? A lot of people just, oh, my God, they just stop. 
and miss out on those opportunities. If you create risk adjusted, um, you know, acquisitions where you're taking 25% off of the current market value, like you said, lowering your LTVs and stuff like that, you still can find great deals and survive out here, man. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. Being creative. Adversity brings growth, right? When you're back against mm-hmm. the wall, bloody your mouth, you work a little bit, a little bit better. You know what I mean? So. Absolutely. I, I agree a hundred percent, man. Yeah. So as far as like, um, connecting yourself with different people during these times, like, uh, you know, board of advisors, people reach out to mastermind groups. Uh, what are you doing, you know, on a daily basis just to keep your pulse on what's happening to the market, you know, besides, um, you know, Trump every day coming out and, and talking about the stimulus or Corona and everything else. What are you doing to feed yourself? mentally to keep you abreast of what's going on and to stay ahead of the curve and not fall into the minutiae. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I mean, my, my day, it's crazy. I feel like I'm busier than what, but you know, before it shut down, <laughs> I mean, my, you know, my wife, and Zoom, my son, zoomed out, right? <laughs> zoomed out. Yeah. It's my third one today, but I, I enjoy it though, because we, we get to connect in the, in the, like you and I, we're, we're both from New Jersey and I mean, we, we we're both in CG mastermind, which is a wonderful mastermind, and we're now really getting to sit down and talk, which I, I think I, I enjoy this because I'm, you know, more personable. That's just my personality. So I'm using this time to do stuff like this, sit down, talk to people. Um, I got a bunch of calls today from a lot of good attorneys who got some development deals that are falling apart, and um, I, I may be positioned to take advantage of them. So I'm, I'm using this time just to slow down, and I'm finding that I'm not, I'm not missing a lot. Yeah, when you, this was good for me also because probably the, like you also, I was constantly moving, 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 doing mm-hmm. this, doing that constantly. And so when this whole thing slowed down, it gave me a chance to really look at everything that was going on. And I was grateful of the slowdown because I was like, wow, mm-hmm. I would never have been able to take care of this if this slowdown wasn't in place. So it really gave me a chance to really get ahead on some things that I was slacking on or kicking the tires on mm-hmm. and really just, you know, weed it out and help me also connect more with my team. We have a GSD day, a Get Stuff Done day, twice a week we'll be time blocked, we jump on a Zoom call, we talk about it, we accomplish it. You know, we're creating things that we were not able to do when we were in the office, always constantly moving, everybody doing a job. So I kind of like this process of going virtual. Another buddy of ours in the mastermind, they just actually uh, ended their lease on their office and they went all virtual and they kind of going that process and i think a lot of businesses are going to fall over to like you were mentioning earlier <laughs> everything is going to fall online i mean the big eye buyers and, and everybody else that was coming to the space everything is done online virtual tours and everything so setting yourself with that for that would definitely yeah. be beneficial in the future i yeah i had two office spaces man one in princeton one in hamilton i'm like we don't need them which is weird because to my staff i always try to justify them because everybody like a nice shiny office but they're calling me like, all right, what are we really missing? I'm not going in the office. And um, they're right. I'm wrong. It's, we don't, I don't need it. You know? Yeah, I mean, sometimes investors, if you have a, a structure where you're running a fund or you, you know, you're raising capital, if you have investors, sometimes they don't want to come to your office and do a tour. Sometimes they want to see that you have a physical setup. You know, unless you had that connection with them. If it's a new person who's vetting you out, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's tough to, you know, bring them to your house. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes those setups are definitely, um, you know, needed and beneficial, uh, just depending on um, the type of business you're doing, right? I mean, if you're just wholesaling and flipping houses, then it's, it's you and your team to help you manage everything administratively. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you leverage in from uh, institutional investors, then it's a different, different play. Um, let's talk a little bit about... Um, Basically, uh, paying it forward to somebody who is new, who may just be getting into real estate, who may catch this video. Like, what piece of advice can you give them for many trials and tribulations or hurdles you had to overcome? Um, you, you came in 2006, so you are market cycle tested. You did go through the 2008-2009 cycle. Right. Um, you know, just starting at that point, it was a lot of opportunity because you said you did a bunch of deals up to 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, what piece of advice can you give somebody who's starting out? What should they be focusing on right now um, mm-hmm. you know, to kind of get in the game, so to speak? Well, yeah, I, I'd say, um, if, if it's, I guess it's two starting out. So you got new investors 
people who are looking to deploy their capital and you got new uh, operators or people who are looking to go wholesale and be active in the business. Um, if you're looking to, to be active in the business or, or invest, I just think getting a, some kind of a foundation needs to be established, um, uh, working on your credit a little bit. Um, and this is boring, the boring stuff nobody wants to hear, like making sure you get a family life and a structure that allots for the time that allows you to research something. Uh, everything now that's, that's being sold, a lot of education is all glitz and gamma. You can do it with no credit, no stuff like that. But the reality is people need to have a, a solid foundation because the way you treat your personal life is the way you're going to treat your business. And you could try to run away from that. But, um, you know, it is what it is. So I got a lot of my experience of buying my first house, that first building that I bought. Um, so for people that are in it and some of them, you know, ha haven't got financing yet and they could qualify for an FHA loan and they could get, you know, put a little bit down and they could use that time to go and research and find out what real estate is all about, to find a property for themselves. Uh, because ultimately our product, we're trying to sell it to someone who's looking for a property. So it's good to go out there as a customer first and go out and look for a property and buy a property of your own. Uh, after that, if you are looking to get into investing, I think you need to, to latch on to somebody that's, um, that, that, that knows their stuff in your area. Uh, we know in New Jersey is, um, you know, a handful of guys up and down New Jersey who dominate certain areas. Uh, if you are a newbie, I think you should get with those guys because they get most of the deals. Um, a lot of the deals up north, uh, forgot relationships I have, anything that they have down South Jersey, they normally send it over to me because they, they know I can convert and vice versa. If I get stuff up north, I give it to the guys that I know convert, can convert. It doesn't normally go to a newbie um, just because they don't have experience or reputation. So I think it's great for a newbie to latch on to someone, you know, like yourself, um, you, know, you know, who dominates their area and uh, can leverage that. That's awesome, man. Well, definitely, I, I appreciate you coming on and sharing the words of wisdom. Um, you know, again, the purpose of this platform really was to provide uh, education to, uh, you know, investors who are passive and also investors who are active. Uh, you know, I, I really wanted to put something together and bring on experienced operators to kind of share, uh, you know, their experience with the group. So I really appreciate you coming on and, and uh, sharing the words of wisdom today. And, you know, this, this, these times now is just going to make all of us stronger, right? Everyone is uh, trying to figure out, you know, what's the next move. And it's just to move like every day, you know, take a step forward and take action and massive action, as they say, and make it happen. And so thanks again a, for I think there's only one thing that's constant throughout all of this that everybody can say is firm. And that is nobody knows what's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the unknown man is the black swan, but uh, I'm sure that there will be a great learning experience um, from this, whether it's financially or you know, just uh, connecting yourself with other people and, and seeing the mistakes that they made that they're now correcting and notice so mm -hmm. noticing so it's going to be um it's going to be fun really to see you know how this whole thing play out um you know i've had because uh, i want to know portfolio i had a few uh just in the last two days i had a few emails from my loan services saying this person wanted to firm it this person can't pay mm -hmm. now beginning of the month i got rental payments i got no payments so now we're at mid-month with some people, payment is due mid-month and it's starting to triple in. So now mm -hmm. I can see some of the effects on my portfolio. So it'd be very interesting um, to see how this whole thing play out and uh, what's going to happen. So, but yeah, thanks again for definitely coming on the show, man. I definitely appreciate it. You want to, if, if anyone want to get in contact with you, you have a, a, a Facebook page, Instagram page, a website or something you want to plug? Yeah, so uh, Facebook is uh, Will Holly, uh, Will Jamar Holly, my middle name's on there. Instagram is willholly.com, um, B-O-T spelled out. And willholly.com is also a website. Holly Nance Property Solutions is the name of my company, and that's a website as well. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for being on the show. All right, brother. Stay up. Thank yeah. you, man. PFRI, another great episode. Wayne Holly. You can catch us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Be sure to share.